I want to do a projectile motion problem, and I want to focus on the connection between the problem and using the quadratic equation. And, and I'm going to go through all the details of how to actually enter that. And that's what I want to focus on. I don't want to focus on projectile motion that much, although I will do that. Let's just get started. So here's the problem. I just made up a problem with actual numbers. We're going to get an actual answer at the end. So a ball is launched with a speed of 2.8 meters per second at a 30 degree angle. That's a degree. Uh, and it's off a table. So it's 1.2 meters above the ground. And then we want to find out where it lands over here. That's the goal. So in terms of projectile motion, uh, there are really, really two important equations to deal with here. First is, um, well, first is that I can find the initial velocity in the x and the y direction. So I can say v with the little diagram right here. Here's my initial velocity. Here's my x velocity. There's my y velocity. And there's my angle theta. So v x initial in the in the x direction is going to be the hypotenuse v zero times cosine of theta. And so I know all these numbers, so I can just get this as a number. And this is going to be 2.8 meters per second times cosine of 30. And we'll put that in a calculator in a second. And then I can find my vy0, my initial y velocity. I'll call that vy0. It's going to be v0 times sine of theta. So that's going to be equal to 2.8 times sine of 30. And again, those are just numbers. We don't, it's, it's fine, it's just a number. Now, if I look at the motion of this ball in the x direction, once it's in the air, there's a downward gravitational force. That means that there is a vertical acceleration. But in the horizontal direction, in the x direction this way, that's my x, and that's my y direction, there's no force. So the acceleration is zero. If the acceleration is zero, I can write x final equals x initial plus vx initial, which is this constant, times time. So I could use this if I know my initial x is 0, x initial is 0 meters. If I know my x velocity, which I do up here, and my time, which I don't know, I could find my x velocity. So now we're going to use, um, so the, the goal is we have to find the time. So we want to find the time. Let's look at the y motion. In the y direction, there's a constant force of mg, and that's going to be m times acceleration. So let me put that right here. F net y is negative mg equals ma. I'll just call it a. So the m's cancel, and so a is equal to negative g. And if I use that with the kinematic equation, I get the following. y final equals y initial plus vy initial times t plus one half the acceleration, which is negative one half g t squared. And in this case, I know my final y hits the ground. So final y is zero. So let's just put in, um, let's just write this. Zero equals the y initial plus v y initial, which is just a number I can calculate that up here, t minus one half g t squared. And so now we're, we're stuck, right? I have to solve this for t. Solve for t. And I have a con zero equals a constant plus a constant times time plus a constant, this is called it, plus a constant times t squared. And there's no easy solution to this. I can't like divide both sides by t. I can't take the square root because because that will mess up this term. If I divide both sides by t, I get that divided by t. So I'm in a real quandary, a dilemma, if you will. And this is where the quadratic equation comes in handy. So the quadratic equation, let's just skip over here to the quadratic equation. I'm going to write quadratic equation. Just so you know that I'm talking about the quadratic equation or quadratic formula. Some people call it the formula. I don't know which one is best. Formula. Question mark. So this says that if I have an equation, this is the way it's always present, presented, and I'm going to write it the way it's presented. Uh, a x squared plus b x plus c equals 0. If I have that, and a and b and c are constants, then uh, 
the value of x that solves that equation will be x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So if you know the value of a, if you know the value of b, you know the value of c, you get two answers. Two answers. I get one plus, I do all this with plus, and then I get one minus. And we're going to do both of those. Now here, let me just write my kinematic equation, negative one half, in a little bit different form, t squared, plus v y zero t, plus y initial equals zero. Where is my colored pen? This would be a good colored pen time. I got a red pen. So here you see that, that, that. All right, they match up. So A in that formula, I'm going to use A, I'm going to use negative one half G because I'm not solving for x, I'm so solving for t. So the a term is a thing in front of t squared instead of in front of x squared. Again, that's just a number. b is going to be vy0, which is v0 sine theta, just a number. c is y initial, just a number. So let's do it. Let's do this, right? So I'm going to write it out. I'm going to find the plus time, and then I'm going to do the minus time. So let's get these all as numbers. I, and I, I don't normally do this, but I think a lot of people like it this way, and I want to do it this way. So the first is this negative 1 half g. I can do that in my head, but I'm going to do it on the calculator. I have a little calculator. I'm trying something new. My little calculator stand here so you can see a little bit better. So I'm going to say I'm going to leave off the negative sign. I'm going to say 9.8 divided by 2 is 4.9. So a is going to be negative 4.9. And it does have units, but I'm leaving off the units because I'm mostly lazy and I just want to get things done. So now let's calculate B. B is going to be V0, which is 2.8. So I'm going to say clear 2.8 times the sine of 30. So I'm going to use sine. And you'll notice right here, I am in degrees mode. 30, close parentheses, equal. Your calculator made a little bit different. That's fine. And I get 1.4. That's a 4, right? Yeah. 1.4. 1.4. Again, that has units. I'm just leaving it off. And then C is Y initial, which I said was 1.2. So let's call this T1. It's going to be equal to this. Okay, so I'm going to put in negative B. So I'm going to say negative 1.4 plus, I'm just going to use the plus, square root of, neg of 1.4 squared minus 4 times negative 4.9, that's a 9, times c, 1.2. All of that's in the square root, and all of this is over 2a. So I get negative 2 times 4.9, and I cheated. a is negative 4.9. I pulled the negative over there. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. If I have a negative sign, I can pull it out front, and I'm going to make this just go away. I'm going to make that plus. Is that okay? Hope that's okay. Let's put this in our calculator. And I really do think that this is something that, that a lot of people make mistakes with. So uh, hopefully we won't make a mistake, although it is very possible because I'm not very good with calculators. So let's do this. Now, I'm going to have a sum of terms here, and I'm going to divide by this. If I don't put parentheses and do this, plus this divided by that, it'll just be this term divided by that. So I need to make a parenthesis there. So I'm going to start off with the parentheses. Now I want the negative 1.4. So there's a negative sign right there, 1.4. And then I'm going to say plus. And now I'm going to say square root, second square root. It gives me the parentheses. See, it gave me a little parenthesis right there. And I'm going to enter... Uh, 1.4 squared. I actually don't have to put that in parentheses because squared is a, a higher order operation than plus, so I'll do that first. So I'm going to say 1.4 squared. Now I'm going to say plus 4 times 4.9 times 1.2. Close parentheses. That ended the square root. Now I need another parentheses close to end the top. 
Now I need to divide by this, so I'm going to say divide, and I need another parenthesis because I have two terms. If you don't put the parentheses there, then you're going to divide by 2 and then multiply by 4.9, and you don't want to do that. So I'm going to put parentheses, negative 2 times 4.9, close parentheses, enter, and I get negative 3.72. T1 equals negative 3, no, point negative 0 0.37, let's use the 2, 2. And that does have units, I'll put seconds. Okay, now we're going to do it again, and I'm going to go ahead and write it out, where I'm going to use the minus sign right there. So let's say T2 is going to be negative 1.4 minus the square root of 1.4 squared plus 4 times 4.9 times 1.2 all of that in there, divided by, uh, I'm going to cheat here, negative, we, we got this by dividing 9.8 by 2, when multiply by 2 we get negative 9.8. Is that okay? If it's not okay, I don't know what to do. Okay, because I already did it. Can't undo what I've already done. Now, some people will say, oh, just calculate this once because you're going to use it twice, but whatever, you do whatever you should. So let's do this one, I'm going to say start with parentheses, negative 1.4 minus the square root of, put the parenthesis there, 1.4 squared plus 4 times 4.9 times 1.2. Close parenthesis, close parenthesis, divided by, open parenthesis, negative 9.8, close parenthesis. I actually I didn't need to do that that time because I only had one thing in there. And I say enter, and I get 6.658. seconds. Now, this is important, right? Because first of all, the minus term is one that gave me my positive time, and that one gave me a negative time. And they both mean something. Let's go back over here. We're trying to find the time that this ball was at y equals zero. And this is that location. And that's the time, the 0 0.658. So this is t equals 0 0.658. That's clearly the one we want. But if you go over, if you imagine that the, the, it's just math, it doesn't know anything. If you went back in time over here to some negative time, it was also at the ground. So that's that negative, this is the negative 0 0.372 seconds. That's what that one means. So it does mean something, okay? But we have that time. Now I have that time, I can plug it in here and find my final x. x final equals x initial zero plus the initial x velocity, I'm going to go ahead and write that as 2.8 times the cosine of 30. I can do that at one step. And then I have to multiply it by my time of 0 0.653. And let's put that in the calculator, and then we will be completed. This completes me. Clear. Okay, so I get 2.8 times cosine 30, close parentheses, times 0.653, enter, and I get 1.583 meters. And that's how to use the quadratic formula. I wrote the quadratic formula right here um, to determine, to solve for projectile motion problem. Now, and I'd like to point out real quickly if you start from the ground level and end at the ground level, this term is zero. You have, you don't need the quadratic equation because you don't have a constant term. You can divide both sides by t. Okay, so that's a little bit easier. Also, if uh, the initial y velocity is zero, you don't need the quadratic equation. It's only if it starts at a height above ground level and has a y velocity initial. So there's cases where you don't have, you can still use the quadratic equation for those cases. You just have C equals zero or B equals zero, but you know, you be you. Hope that helps.